Hello and welcome today on BOI Weekly. Bank of Industry collaborates with Business Day, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, National Productivity Center, as well as Procter & Gamble to provide capacity building program for the bank's customers and other business owners in the southwestern region of the country. The program tagged SME Academy 2019, optimizing people, processes and products was specifically designed by P&G to empower and transfer knowledge to existing and potential customers of the Bank of Industry. I of course is um, to transfer knowledge to our customers and prospects because at the course of doing the business and the bank we have discovered that uh, funding alone cannot make us achieve our main objective. We have to support it with capacity building. We believe that with knowledge, we can have good management for those businesses we are lending to. And with good businesses, that will also guarantee sustainability of those businesses. And when it, the businesses are sustainable, they will be able to pay their facilities granted to them by the bank. So doing that, it will make uh, our job easier. That's what the Bank of Industry hopes to achieve on this particular occasion as it partners with Procter & Gamble to support SMEs in Oyo State. This is the 2019 edition of the PNG Academy, an enterprise development and support initiative targeted specifically at a select group of small and medium-skilled businesses in the country. The Southwest edition of the SME Academy is a follow-up to the agreement Procter & Gamble made with the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment to ensure the growth of SMEs in Nigeria. The idea is about finding sustainable solutions to unlocking the efficiency and performance of these enterprises through advisory and skills development as a way of addressing challenges being faced by MSMEs ranging from capacity building to adequate infrastructure, access to finance, and advanced technologies. Uh, and your that you this edition is holding in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital, and in this room are other partners in the project, like Business Day Newspapers, the National Productivity Center, NECA Global Certification Limited, and the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade, and Investment, just to name a few. The Bank of Industry's existing and potential customers, as well as other select businessmen and women operating in the region, are also here. What began as a family-run candle and soap business? As a curtain raiser, the managing director, Procter & Gamble, Nigeria, Mr. Adil Farhat, shares stories about days of P&G's own little beginnings and why it feels compelled to contribute to the growth of small businesses in Nigeria through its academy, as well as having strategic partnerships with government and other relevant agencies like the Bank of Industry. We have a soft spot for SMEs because the company started out as one. PNG was founded in 1837 by William Procter and James Gamble, and they started out selling soaps and candles. What began as a family-run candle and soap business grew through innovation, creative marketing, and partnerships to become the largest consumer goods company in the world. Through value creation, the business has transcended decades and has been in operation for over 180 years. Over the years, the organization has supported SMEs in various capacities in Nigeria through our SME Development Academy and Women Entrepreneurship Development Program. We have trained thousands of businesses in collaboration with the public and private sector on entrepreneurship fundamentals such as business and strategy development, human resource development, assessing finance, and corporate branding. PNG has always collaborated with well-meaning organizations to empower and develop capacity of SMEs all over the world. We have also expanded our supply diversity efforts to include women-owned business in Nigeria to our Women Entrepreneurship Entrepreneur Development Program. Earlier this year, we signed an agreement with the Federal Ministry of Trade and Industry to enhance SMEs competitiveness and increase their innovative capabilities. SMEs are the bedrock of any nation and the Nigeria SME landscape is no exception. The country can only develop better and survive economically under a thriving SME culture 
as the sector holds huge potential for generating employment opportunities for the country's growing population and economic development. We believe that when SMEs have the right capabilities, businesses perform better, economies prosper, and communities thrive. For Business Day newspapers, it's about telling stories of businesses in ways that contribute to entrepreneurship development in Nigeria. Sometimes we say, businessmen will say, give me the money and I'll do whatever I can. Sometimes it's not the money, it's just the knowledge. And that's what we are business they are trying to do. Okay, what are those opportunities? What are those real roadblocks? Tell them. And tell them with the stories of people. People who have succeeded, people who are thriving, people who are striving. That's what we do at business day. There's a young girl who just finished from the Pan-Atlantic University, uh, first class accounting. Now, at the Pan-Atlantic University, you're given seed money, I think in your third year or your second year, to run a business and you must ac account for that money. Um, so what did this girl do? She had this money and she had to do, had to start the business. That's the whole idea. And she came up now, Pan-Atlantic University, for those of you who have been there, is way, way, way out of Lagos. It's um, Bejuleki a few kilometers after the turn into um, where you have the free trade zone and so it's quite difficult even from the main gate to the main campus it's quite it's quite a drive it's quite a difficult so she came up with this and uh, this idea of rides okay so she came up with the idea of like an uber or a bolt but for campus that market on campus she found a catchment she found a market and said you know what I'm going to match drivers who have time with my the staff and students of my school. And she came up with Dudu Rights and, was, and it did quite well. And so she was able to turn over that money that was given to her as seed money. So in addition to the knowledge that she gained with the first class in accounting, so just running and being advised, being around the right people, was able to come up with an, an idea as Dudu Rights. It's very interesting how you could just take one small company grow it, run it, and then get the right investments and really turn it into something very big that will actually impact the economy and lives. This is what we are about at Business Day as well. We're trying to find, look at the economy and say, look, yes, this economy can do much better. 14 million SMEs, fantastic. 30% of jobs created, wonderful. But can it, can it do more? So I think we need more of that. And that's why the SME Academy is here. We're proud to be part of it and we hope we will have the impact that we all wish to see. And here comes the first session. The speaker dwells on how businesses can strategically position themselves for optimum profitability. Do not start a business until you are very sure of your consumers, total understanding of your consumers. Even when you know your consumers, what is the unique proposition your product we saw for within the territory we are establishing. You want to sell more, you want to spend less, you want to collect faster, and you want to be the market leader in the environment you are in. So all this is to be in place because I understand where I'm setting up my business and I understand my target market. Secondly will now be how do I keep that market when I enter the market? Which takes us to the second point, which is the reliability and excellent service delivery. I'll give an example. I have a certain electrician that I use in my house and we fight almost all the time. The reason is very simple. He's so good. He's the best guy I've ever met when it comes to electrical work. You know his problem? He cannot keep the time. Now, after you enter the market, you know the target market, you understand that if you cannot keep up with the demand of the market, what do you think would happen? No matter how good you are, so this is my particular friend, the electrician. This time I want to introduce him to another colleague. I always say, he's the best in after slide break. However, he cannot keep the time. 50% of them will say, you know what, don't worry. The other will say, let me try. But where would you rather be? Let me try, or is the guy? Since the world has essentially become a global village, it's now necessary for businesses to tailor their products and services to meet global standards, a position that exposes them to tremendous opportunities. This speaker tells them how. This is where we talk about global value creation. 
as a multinational company, we want to work with a number of uh, SMEs. And when I say that we believe that SMEs are the bedrock of any economy, it's not just a game thing. We work with a lot of SMEs and have worked to create a number of SMEs. But there's a gap. And there's a gap between the expectation of the multinational companies and the standards of some of the SMEs. It's very important to bridge this gap. Understanding um, the standards and the requirements of any of the organizations that you're working with will actually help us um, to work better together. I'll give you an example. So we, ha we have suppliers who produce some of our raw materials or some of our packaging materials um, for us. But it was very difficult to start with. To start with, we had to import almost anything we needed because as a global organization, we have to keep to a certain standard. Pampers here is Pampers anywhere else in the world, including the quality of the packaging. I can't have a Pampers packaging that starts to bleed. The ink starts to bleed. It's, for me, already a quality issue. So we had to work with local um, suppliers. It took quite some time, I mean, stretching over five years, investing in their capacity, building up their knowledge to ensure that they can meet up to the standards of multinationals like ourselves. So this is something that I think a lot of SMEs need to understand. And when earlier on I talked about the Agua as well, this has been some of the challenges to us utilizing Agua, ensuring, because while it's free, it has to meet certain standards. So let's uh, be sure that we are working uh, on, on this if we work with multinationals. Now, very quickly, I will go into um, ethics, because when we talk about standards, there's a product standard, but then there's also your personal standard or your company standard. Uh, Warren Buffett said that you can build up uh, a company in 20 years, build up your reputation, and it can be destroyed in five minutes. If it's destroyed in that five minutes, you may never actually be able to, I was going to say you take another 20 years, but you may never, ever recover from it again. So that's why it's very important to keep high standards. I can lose millions of dollars, but if I do something that goes against our principles and values, it's, a, it's an unforgivable sin. Because the cost of reputation, you cannot measure. For local businesses to take advantage of trade opportunities beyond borders, it's essential that they adhere to global quality management standards and obtain requisite certification like the ISO. NECA Global Certification Limited, an indigenous company providing relevant international training and certification support, is positioned to assist. We, you need our support. We, you need our support. That's the truth. We want to look at the opportunities of showcasing what you do as an organization to the inter international world. Our certificate becomes an evidence that will make multi -organi multinational organization to believe in you and to request your package. And it's actually doable. We can take your business from where it is to where it has to be. We are in the global market. Supporting you from wherever you are right now and exposing you where? To the world. To the world. Certifying your management system, that is your business model, the way you do it, the structure of your company. When it comes to structure, not in terms of size now, that is not relevant. It's in terms of internal culture and process activity. Process activity. Okay, that enables you. See, why, what, what, from experience, what I've seen that enhances this is that even clearly to you, business owner, Areas that you have never or you could never have imagined that would be necessary. ISO will bring it, open it up for you and guide you how to travel. The very good example is the risk and opportunity. Don't go and do any business if you have not identified the risk. What can go, this is what can go wrong that can break down the business. So ISO will ensure that identify them clearly and come up with what? Actions in place. So that the moment anyone is surfacing, there's an action to do what? To take care of it. So please take note, the last line there says what? Our certification is what? An evidence of a valid recognition that your company's management system conforms to the international standard. 
Francis Madujemu on his part encourages the participants to look at customers and markets with a much clearer prism. What is the real problem preventing companies in Africa from growing? Is it a lack of access to finance? Is it power? Is it good roads? Since the authors have an answer more simple. It says lack of people who can grow a business. We don't we lack enough people with the skills to grow a business into something that delivers productivity gains. For too long, we have assumed an economy is the amount of oil we can sell and bring back to the country and share amongst ourselves. No, an economy is what we can generate among ourselves. And this is our problem. We are looking at poor people and saying they are not our customers. All of us are competing for the only four out of a hundred Nigerians who earn above one dollar a day. Because that's how we look at our country. Are you here? There are five, this is written by a man called Hans Drosley. There are five billion potential customers out there improving their lives in the middle and waiting to consume shampoo, motorcycles, menstrual pads, smartphones. You can easily miss them if you go around thinking that they are poor. Let, you know, I'm sorry, Pokemon, what are their products? Pampas. So, who buys it? Presidents? We are looking in the wrong direction. That's what is happening in Nigeria. As technology has come in, well, there were tellers in the bank. Now we go to ATM. Now there's electronic banking. Am I making sense? Yeah. Now everything is beginning to change. Yeah. And people are coming out of jobs and we are shouting. They are jobless. It's not that they are jobless. It's that their jobs have changed. The Bank of Industry has a 1 billion naira matching fund with the Ohio State Government. The state manager of the Bank of Industry, Mr. Paquin Zerabo, tells the participants how to position themselves for the intervention funds available at the Bank of Industry within Oyo State. You either come to our office direct or you use our one billion fund. So we are go to that product, product and services. Yes, I'm talking about the BOI or your state MSME fund. It is a one billion fund and it, it comes to you at five percent, zero point four two percent per annum. Can you beat that? This in the same society where you are charged five percent per month by microfinance bank, yes, you are getting zero point four two percent. You can't go wrong with that. Once you are able to tell us that, look, this is the problem I'm about to address in our country. Bank of Industry give you the federal supply. But before you come to Bank of Industry, you must be sure that you have your business model already dotted. You have dotted the I's and you have crossed the T, and a lot is already entering into your account. How many of you like a lot? <laughs> so from the business, until a lot is entering into your account, it is not a good time to borrow. Tell your neighbor, until a lot is entering into your account, it is not a good time to borrow. Don't experiment with borrowed funds. We see a lot of people, they are just at the point of saying, oh, I have this idea. It is not the first idea that you take to the market that you will use to prosper in the market. There will be a lot of pivoting. You have sent out the product, you now discover that this, that is not the language of the customer. You need to tweak it, you need to tweak it, you need to tweak it. So that is not the time to borrow. It's been a long day. But then, what are the participants taking away from the encounter? A lot, a lot. Like... Uh internalizing and internationalizing business in Nigeria with regards to making our business getting across Africa and beyond. I first uh, thank them for the, for the effort that they do. I have good relationship with Bio High. They've always been on point. Uh, their ethics is out of this place. Uh, in Nigeria that we had, there's a lot of corruptions. I can tell you point black that there's nothing like that in Bio High. Uh, you don't need to know anybody before you approach them. If you have a sincere business that you want to grow, they will always support you. So I, I give them kudos for that. I really learned a lot. Um, business branding, how to place your market, and how to deal with customers. Um, your, how to be more productive, and how to use the social media, 
and how to you know customize your own brand again much in the hr section because that is one of the major problem an average entrepreneur faces you know we uh, we do misinterpret that our business the problem is finance but I got to know right in the business that it's not really finance to start with because even if you have billions of naira if you don't have right to hands everything will sink. I really learned a lot about marketing a lot about um, human resource franchising partnership and all and I'm sure every part of the program was so impactful to me. And for the bank of industry they'll ensure that the program goes around the country. It's a national bank. We have the national coverage. We have done this for Oyo State. And I'm sure by next, by the end of this month, we are going to have a similar one in Oshobo, Ocean State. And from Oshobo, I equally have intention to do another one, Upper Mount uh, in Kwara. So we will continue from one state to another. So there you go. These capacity building programs for SMEs is an ongoing exercise at the Bank of Industry. So watch the space. We would fill you in when the next BOI supported capacity building program is coming to your neck of the woods. BOI would continue to leverage partnerships to ensure that local businesses get relevant technical and financial supports that keeps them running in a sustainable fashion. If you're an entrepreneur, rest assured that help is waiting for you at the Bank of Industry. Contact BOI today to see how you can benefit. You can also visit their website at boi.ng or call at any of their branches closest to you. But remember, you can apply for BOI loans online. Just download the BOI SME loan app from the Google Play Store and follow the instructions. For further information, feel free to tweet at me at K-A-Y Alayade. Now, previous editions of the program are all available on YouTube. Simply type BOI Weekly in the search area, and there you go. That will be our package for today. Many thanks for watching. I'm Kaede Alayade. Bye now.